so normally we would do those things, but we can't do that today because you don't have your laptop yet. So we won't be uh, taking the self-assessment and stuff, but I do want to kind of show you what I'm talking about on self-assessments because it's going to be something you guys will see up here all the time as the beginning of class assignment. I'll say something like take the or retake the. Every single one of the chapters has at the top of it, I'm going to switch to student mode here. It has a, the I can statements, and right under the I can statements, it has the chapter one self assessments. Okay, what that is, I'm going to go ahead and show you. What that is is just you saying to me what you know right now. Okay, and it's a snapshot right now, and it's really the I can statements rewritten as a you say. So, can you list the basic things that make a PC work? Now, right now, you may say no to all these. No, I don't know what the input output device is. No, I don't know what the difference between hardware and software. No, I don't know what CPU stands for. And that's fine, okay? And the reason it's the beginning of class activity every time is because as we go through, before we get to the test, I'm hoping all these turn to yeses. I don't want you to say yes to make me happy. I want you to say yes to say you know it. Because I use this as my guide for our end of chapter review. If everyone says they understand the basic things that make a PC work, I may only spend 30 seconds on it. On the hey, make sure you all know this. If you said they did it, remember that when we went over that the first day on the, on the basic things. Yes, okay, move on. I'm not going to spend 20 minutes on this if eight out of nine people, which is how many have in computer one, said they know it. What I am going to say, if eight out of nine people say they know it, is if you're the one person that said no to this, please come and see me during intervention before the test on Tuesday. Okay? Because I don't think I should review a whole section just because Brighton didn't get that one item. The idea for me of the test review is to spend the time on the things that collectively we're confused on, and then you come and see me during intervention for the onesie twosie. So when it says take the self-assessment, when you come back into it the second time, all your previous answers will be there. I expect you to change them as we go. Okay, I've gone over this now. Next time I look at it, I should see, you know, seven out of nine people now understand it. And then we maybe talk about it again. But the idea of the self-assessment is for you to give me an idea of what you think you know so that I can make sure I'm teaching you what you don't. Okay? Now, there will be some things that you might all say you don't understand what a PC CPU is for. We're still going to teach it the first time. Okay, to make sure you understand what I want you to understand. But after that, I may not do it. And it may be I go over this and you change it to a no because you thought you knew, but now you're confused. Okay, it's allowed to go backwards the other way. If the chapter is really long, like chapter four is a very big chapter because it goes over motherboards and CPU and memory. By the time we get to memory, you may be saying no back to a motherboard thing. I do not understand that I forgot. That's okay, okay? So it's when you fill it out, when I put it as beginning class activity, that's where I am right now today, so Mr. Cool understands it. And when I see that the same feedback, I have to switch back to I am. When I go and see the feedback, I just see the analysis, and then it will show like this. Okay, 100% um, of the students said they understand that. This is old class, right? That survey. 100% said they understand that. 100% I'm like, yes. Okay, that's what I that's what I would like to see prior to you taking the chapter one test. And if I don't see that, let's see if there's any that are worse than though. If I don't see that, where only 75% of the people can understand what CMOS and CMOS RAM are, maybe I need. Okay, so that's the idea of the self-assessment. So a lot of times you're going to come in and say, log in the middle. Obviously, the indicator, did I mention the indicator last class? That means you should have a laptop app. That means your desk should be clean. Retake it. Sometimes it'll be a beginning of course video that's posted up here. Watch this video, then take the self-assessment because it might be a review. It might be a video I forgot to assign last week to do before the class or something. But there'll be something like this up on the board majority of the time of what I want you to do. And I expect you to just come in, set up, and then when when we're done, I might say, hey, whenever you're done with that, close your laptop, let us know, and we can move on. And that'll be my 
an indication that everybody in the class has got it done. So when I say that, don't get done and stop watching YouTube cat videos because I'm going to think you're still doing that other thing and not watching YouTube cat videos. Okay? I've only had one student that really loves YouTube cat videos. Who is a Okay, so today's class goal is learn how to correctly set up and connect to PC. You guys are going to be connecting all the PCs in the middle school. We're going to go down there and start on a room today after we've gone through and how to correctly set up a PC. And this is going to be a slow process. There are, in the middle school alone, at least 100. Well, now, Mr. Studebaker's is all set up, and he doesn't have as many PCs. He has all multi-port systems. We redid his all summer. So you know those three systems that he had that had four things? Now all of his are like that. So for his 24 stations, there's only six computers in there. It's a model of power efficiency. You know how much money we save just from doing that? Well, my dad doesn't know, but he has three computers, but it's only like one. One, right. And you know, a computer costs about $85 a year to run. So when we do that in Studebaker's room, we take out 20 computers, that saves us $1,000 in electricity just in that room. So that's one of the reasons we're doing it. However, all of Thompson's room, Mrs. Thompson's room, is all PCs, and unfortunately, every single one of those has not been it. Somebody didn't follow the directions that their cleaning supervisor gave them, I think. They weren't supposed to be unhooked, but in many of the rooms, everything is unhooked. So, anyways, today we're going to learn how to set up and connect to PC. We're, we are going to take our time. We're going to do it nice and neat. If the only thing we get done is one room in a day, to a point, that's okay. Now, if you guys went to one room and set up four computers in 80 minutes, eh, maybe we have to have a talk. Okay, there probably is an efficiency loss there that we can work on. Okay, but in uh, Mrs. Thompson's room, there's 28 I think in there. Doing the whole room would be phenomenal in one day. I don't think that will happen. Okay, so but today we're going to talk about this. Make sure we understand that. So we talk about the basics of a PC. I'm talking about of a computer system. What things do we have to have required to be able to sit down and use a computer? So um, let's see if we can brainstorm some ideas. What's required? Okay, we have to have power. How many do we need? How many power cords do we need? Two. We need two. Excellent. Why do we need two? One for are you talking yeah, for a computer, you need one for the tower. Exactly, we need two. And and, and this is a good point because oftentimes they'll say, hey, can you guys go set up four node systems in this room? And they grab four power cords. Okay? Now, the blue guy is sad. Just leave it that way. The blue person is the runner. Every other week, we're going to have a new seating chart. And right now, we're just going to go with the way you are. So you guys would be a pair, and you guys would be a pair. So if your group needs something, you're the runner. You're the runner. So when you see the seating chart, the blue guy is the runner. That way, we don't argue about it. What does that mean? You guys go out to set up a system in 406, and you're missing three power cords. There's no conversation. Go get three power cords, OK? It's not, I went last time kind of thing, and it doesn't matter. If you're blue, you're doing the running for the, that time period. So I try to make sure we swap out who's blue and who's white. You guys understand blue is blue ball, white for Okay. So if you forget and you take a cart to a room and you forgot to get two power cords per workstation, then you need to somebody has to go. Okay, so we got to have power cords. What else do we need? Uh, to actually make it work? Yeah. We we'll, need a we'll part. Oh, uh, okay. Not individual parts, but the oh you need the um the motherboard but that's not what I'm saying you need the um the this thing. the tower the tower there we go okay so we need a tower they're not all towers but we need a workstation we need the PC itself I know that seems silly why would I say that you just said what we need to make a PC work of course we need a PC that's not always something students don't count sometimes go set up four workstations and you know, take four PCs with them. okay so I need a tower PC itself, okay, what else do I need? That's required, that I have to have in order to sit down and use this workstation, a mouse. Okay, I need a mouse, a mouse is required. Didn't used to be, we didn't even, when, when there is no mouse plug on this original IBM PC here that was not invented yet. We had to use the keyboard and the arrow keys to go everywhere. 
You had to use keyboard combinations to highlight and cut and paste. There was no mouse. The mouse was like the most awesome thing in the world when Apple brought, Apple brought it to the world. It's like, oh my gosh. Oh, we got the first uh, uh, Mac when I was down at Duke. And, and I, I, you know, we're all just like sitting around it going, Okay, so I, I mouse and along with keyboard. mouse, I need a keyboard. Okay. Some of my questions on the test are predicated on the overall outline of this course. Do I already have a book out? I have a book out somewhere. I don't know where it is. Okay. So this class is an A plus hardware class. A plus guide to hardware. Okay. A plus is a certification through Microsoft that at the end of the class you can take the test. I don't know whether you passed it. I don't know. I actually haven't ever taken the test because some of the stuff is silly. We never even know. But anyways, there are some questions that I make sure you know. Like the two primary input devices are the mouse and keyboard. That is a Microsoft question that if you took the A plus hardware exam, you would be asked that question. So some of my questions that I give on, my, on the course are directly out of the A plus hardware exam. Now I will tell you my I can stream down a lot of that. Which is why I said I don't know whether you pass because of things I don't think are important. I didn't make I cans and I don't talk to you about. There's some IRQ stuff that we used to have to know, interrupt requests, things that you have to you used to have to set on a, on the motherboard in order to make things not conflict with each other. It's all plug and play now. You don't have to do that. You'll never have to know what an IRQ is. It's on the test. So I give it to you. No, I don't think it's important. I don't, I don't think you should need, you should know things that you will never need to know. Ridiculous. So that's why I said maybe. You guys. Anyways, the two primary input devices, the mouse and keyboard, that is a test question, guaranteed, was the two primary input devices, the mouse and keyboard. Okay, what else do I have to have? I have to have a monitor. Which is one of the two primary output devices. If there are two primary inputs and there are two primary outputs, and one of them is the monitor, what do you think the other one is? Output. Two uh, ways you get things out of a computer. Monitor is one of the primary outputs. The other one's in this room, close to my desk. Got tired of walking around the room. Never out of it. Mm -hmm. A printer, okay. Two primary inputs are keyboard and mouse. Two primary outputs are monitor and printer. Is a printer required to set up a PC? No, that's over on the option. I don't have to have a printer to get a computer to work. In the middle school, there be any anything computer that we need to set up. Are all of them are no, everything is a network printer. Everything's uh, a network printer. So these are the required things. There's one more required thing. Monitor. That is just terrible writing down there. Okay. What other kind of optional things can you think of? Optional? Optional. Fax machine. Okay. Be a fax or a more appropriately more a fax machine. <laughs> scanner. Okay. Um. Because really, you don't fax anymore. You scan and email. I mean, there are very few people that actually have fax machines anymore, and they're really scanners that function as fax machines. And they emulate the fax machines. Okay, so I got printers, fax scanner. What other kind Speakers. of stuff? Speakers. Speakers. Excellent. That's definitely optional. Okay, we're all going to hook up speakers anytime we're on a teacher's PC. But most of the time, we do not have most. Not all the time. But most of the time, we do not have speakers in student PCs. Okay. We used to have speakers in every student's PC. I have a box full of them still. Speakers that went right there so students could listen right out of the CPU. Okay. It is annoying. And then everybody's like, well, I don't want that. I'd rather just look up headphones. Well, then why would I put those in when there's a headphone jack right there? So that's why we don't use them anymore. Okay. So speakers, I'm going to go put HP for headphones there because that's optional. Yeah, I didn't have to the same thing. I, yeah. Okay. What other kind of optional stuff might I have? And I have a bunch of it in my room, plugged into mine right now. I mean, I have a gaming controller. I have a black Okay, I can, might have, I'm going to write controller because I'm going to say not just gaming, this is a controller, my Mimeo, oh, yeah, yeah. smart board, any kind of input, other input controlling device, I'll throw in your gamer controller that we could have. And along with that, I've got a camera, I got a mic. Okay, there's a bunch of optional stuff that get that you have to plug into. Internet is internet optional? Yes. No, it's not. 
log into that PC right here when I unplug the internet. Okay? That, and that's why I waited. Can you log on to that if I unplug the network cable? Or will you just get this for the rest of your life? I'm still kind of on the At home. Laptop. At home, it's definitely optional. At home, it's a, yeah. But internet, even on a laptop, is not optional. Maybe it's wireless. Just do stuff. I mean, like, I to even get on to it. So, no, it's definitely optional anywhere else, but here it's required. So I'm going to put network down. Okay? And that's because we're a network, you have to have it connected in order to log on. Now, the computer does remember me. So even if I disconnect it, I can log on 10 times with this. Which is why you guys need to keep bringing your laptops to school to log on, because if you just left it home, eventually you're not going to be able to log on to your laptop at home. And then, long enough, it's going to delete your whole profile because it knows, well, if you haven't been on it for three weeks, this obviously isn't yours. I'll go ahead and delete it. Is they going to do that at Christmas break? Huh? Is they going to do that? No, it's not because we set it a really long time, but just in case. How long did you set it? So, I don't remember. It was like 30 days or something. But oh, I really didn't think you that you could still log it. The logon count counts at home. So it's not going to delete you if you keep logging on at home, but eventually it's not going to let your password work. No. Anyway. So. Here's what I've got. I wouldn't power, monitor, keyboard, mouse, network, and obviously we said power times two on that. Optional, there's some stuff I had optional. But these things we need to make sure whenever we go to set up that we've got right away. Because what we don't want to do is be three quarters through and then all of a sudden go, I need this. We'd rather do an inventory. And I got two keyboards, I need three more mice, blah, blah, blah. And we only send the blue person back once. It would be really annoying if Emma got sent back for a power cord. Hey, I need a VGA cable. She gets sent back for a VGA cable. She comes back and he's like, oh, I need one more mouse. And then she's, she comes back and she, the next time she's got a mouse and a blunt object. Okay. So we want to try to take an inventory right away of what we're going to set up so we only run back once. Now, it might happen again, but you really get tired, especially if you're in the far side of the middle school, if you made the trip back five times. And it can get old, right? We'd like to make one chuckle. Okay, so we need to learn not only uh, how to hook up a PC, but what those things in the back are for. Now, of all these connections, there are some that you will never use and that some you use all the time. Okay? We have two kinds of video inputs that we could use all the time, either one of those video inputs. We have USB, which is our primary way to connect up. Along with USB, we still have uh, PS2 connectors for older keyboards and mice. Those are the green, green, green and purple. Yeah. Yep. And we're going to look at some pictures of that. And then we also have That's our network connector. Of all those, these are the primary ones that you're going to use. And of those, it's usually this one, this one, and this one. PS2, not as much. And the DVI only on teacher. We can see those kind of connections. We're going to look at some color ones. That's uh, an old picture of that. So here's the back of a, of a tower. This is the keyboard and mouse plug right here. And these are PS2. So if I said, what kind of connector does an old keyboard and mouse use, you would say PS2. And if I ask you, what color was an old PS2 keyboard plug, you would say uh, only one of those. Is it green or purple? Keyboard is purple, and the mouse is by the definition in green. Okay, they have to be plugged into the right one, or they won't work. And PS2 has to be plugged in when the power is off. If your mouse is working and your neighbor unplugs it and plugs it back in, your mouse will probably not work until you turn off your computer and turn it back on, because PS2 was never made to be plugged in while power is off. Have that happen all the time. Did you say, well, I went and reseated the keyboard and it still doesn't work? Was it running? Yes. Well, you need to restart the computer. Well, how am I supposed to do that? The keyboard doesn't work. Well, then you push the power button, and when I push the power button, the computer turns off, and then I push the power button again. PS2 does not like to be connected with power on. 
used to be able to actually damage your PC. Used to actually damage your PC. That's old. I will say the computers in the district, I'm going to throw out a number. I'm going to say 15% might still have PS2. Most of them do. And the newer one, like in the Pacific or the old one? They yeah, only take yeah. USB. None of those take PS2. The, and the, for instance, in the high school, we're putting all the PS2 in the high school right now. Why would you do that? Okay, so here's why. You're all getting laptops. Here's my laptop. I've got a nice video connector over here, two USBs on here. I've got a, uh, actually that's a HD video connector right there. There's my power connector, there's my network connector. There's two more USB, there's my sound, there's a firewire. Do you see a PS2 connector? Anywhere. No. So why would I put PS2 mice on all the docking stations, Mr. Fool? So that no one will steal them. If I have USB mice in every connector in the high school, you guys won't, I'm not saying you guys will. Somebody will go, I'd like to have a mouse at home for my my uh, laptop that I just got, I'll take this one. So if we move all the PS2 to the high school and no one has PS2, someone's still going to steal it. And then they're going to realize they can't use it. And they won't bring it back. But they won't steal a second. Okay? I don't like PS2 as much. They don't, but it just necessity. We're like, oh, let's move all the PS2 over here. So as we connect up stuff in the middle school, we're going to try to use USB as much as possible. So that if we need the PS2, we can put them on docking stations over here. We already have PS2 on all the docking stations in 209 and 213, and most of the PS2 mice have been used for the for the um, individual docking stations. So that's the only reason. Everybody likes USB better. It's easier. You didn't have it. You just plug it in. Okay. So we've got PS2. Right here we've got video, and right here we've got video, and right here. <coughs> Got videos. These are all video. These two videos are this kind of VGA plug. Okay? Standard. 90% of our stuff is that. Okay? That is DVI or digital video. DVI is better. Um, only, is teacher. only the teacher computers have little <laughs> Only them have DVI. Here's the thing. DVI cables used to cost but $20 a piece. Every single one of the teacher's computers will take DVI. But I wasn't going to spend $20 a piece on cables. Okay? So we have a lot of these. This is an adapter that plugs in DVI, plug into there, and then you can plug VGA into it. However, uh, this summer, Mr. Anderson and I went dumpster diving. And I say that seriously, I was in a dumpster throwing cables out to Mr. Anderson. We went to Wright-Patterson, where, where we get a lot of our stuff, and I, I asked them, why don't we ever get power supplies to the laptops? We get 500 laptops, zero power supplies. Okay? And they said, well, we don't inventory this, we just throw them away. So there's a big, huge dumpster full of just wires. They threw all the wires in the dumpster. So I'm in there, that's where all these power supplies came from. And you can see how used they were when they were thrown away. Okay. We put the rubber band around and they were still in plastic. So I'm in there up to my ankles and you know, throwing wires out to them. And we got about 200 DVI cables, brand new, still in the package. Okay. So slowly what we are going to do is replace the adapters with DVI cables for the teachers because they will have better graphics. It's, it is clearer and sharper. But for now, they all have this. And when we put these in, we always screw them in. Whenever we put placement stuff in permanently, we screw it in. Whenever we do it here in the classroom, because I'm demonstrating something, yeah. we do not screw it in. Because every time we screw things in, we take a chance of unscrewing this one. And when that screw is missing, now all of a sudden I can't screw it in at all. Okay? So in this classroom, we do not screw, we just push them in. But out in the world, the rest of the district, we always screw them in. This one's hard. I have little flathead screwdrivers to do just that, okay? To screw those in. And I'm not saying crank them down, I'm just saying so that they can't fall out. And we don't have to go and fix it. Okay, so I just said there's three here. If there's three, 
if you see an extra expansion card, and sometimes some students have expansion cards too, that makes this one not work. Do not use it. If I plug into there, you will get nothing at all. Okay? So I've got an expansion video card on this one right here, and I actually have a cover on the other video. That's what is underneath this. I'll, I'll get the other PC so I don't have to try to pull that off and hurt myself. Okay, so here's the standard teacher PC, it's our spare. If I plug in there, it will not work. The computer is smart enough to say this is the motherboard items. These are the things that came with the computer. These are called add-on cards. It's smart enough to say you added on this, you must therefore want to use it. And it turns this off. I can plug into that all day. At most, I will get a warning on boot up that says non-supported video. And then that's it. Okay? So whenever you see this one, you want to use those. And if it's a teacher one, and the reason they have these is so one can go to the projector, one can go to their monitor. You have to look and see the little line there. Look where the line goes. Because if I force this one, I can force it in backwards and run it up. Because this is very, very cambered in. It's hard. It would be impossible to put this one in backwards. This one has almost no camber to it. And if I really try, I can ruin this, okay? And put it the wrong way. But if I slide that one in there, I just use a little screwdriver to screw this on, and then I have to screw onto there, or the weight of the cable will eventually make it work. Okay. Uh, I'm erasing this and then on here. So, I got my video. Then I've got USB on here, and these, these are the USB. I've got four USB plugs right there, okay? And I'm going to draw you a picture, because this is non-standard. In the standard one, it's like that one, where both of these, where I actually have six. Okay, I have four in a row, and then I got two. Same thing here. I got four in a row, and I've got two. Now, USB is great. Okay, it stands for Universal Serial Bus, and I'm going to be very basic here on my explanation. But let's say we've got that. Just so you know, all USB is not created equal. First of all, they're all in pairs. These are actually the same plug. These are actually the same plug. These are all the same. these are actually the same plug. I can plug that USB keyboard and mouse into anywhere I want to, and it's going to work. Okay. But as I'm in a classroom plugging stuff in, if I'm working on a teacher's computer or something, I need to remember that these are in pairs because if it's something that uses a lot of power, let's say my camera there and my Mimeo. If I plug them in here and here, and this is really only one plug, is it going to run as good as if I plug them in here and here? And the answer is no, because it's sharing that. Okay? Let me do I'm going to pick up my axis. Okay? So when I use USB, because it's in pairs, I try to spread them out if I can. In fact, I was showing them how we hook up these in the middle school or in the elementary school, which you guys are not going to be doing yet, but um, these are mice and keyboards. They take almost no power. So I actually put those together so that these are separate because this over here is on one cable. It's got to push mouse, keyboard, USB, sound, and video. Do I want anything else on this USB? No, because if I did, it would run like a Okay. So there's also differences in USB standards. The original USB was 1.1. Where did one go? I don't know. Okay. Then we got USB 2.0, and now we just came with USB 3.0. Very few things have USB 3.0. The don't difference. They will. The newer stuff will. Yes. I have it. I have a 3.0 adapter in my computer to give me 3.0 because I thought I was going to get something that was 3.0, and I never did. And most things are still USB 2.0. But I will tell you the difference between this to this is 50 times faster. It's not a little faster, it's a lot faster. So if you plug something in, it says, you get a pop-up sometimes. When I plug stuff in, it says, this device could perform faster. For instance, if I hooked my phone up, we'll see if it gives us the pop-up. If I took and hooked my phone up to this, this uh, keyboard is a USB 1.0 hub. OK? 
Okay, it's not 2.0, it's 1.0. So when I hook something up, if it's 1.0, sometimes, if it's a 1.1, it will have a little pop-up that says, we're still not going to do it? Let's see. Uh, no, I didn't install the drivers. Sometimes it'll have a pop-up that says, this could perform faster. Okay, the could perform faster is 50 times faster. It's not could perform faster, it was you're stupid, plugging me in somewhere else is what it should say. Okay, so if you get that little pop up down here, it says this device could perform faster, you're in a 1.1 port, and not all of them are always the same. Like these could all be, and they are. These are all 2.0 ports. But these on the front might only be 1.1 ports. Might. So if you plug something in, I'm talking mainly at home. And you get that warning, which we didn't get. Try a different port, okay? Because all the ports on your own PC are not necessarily the same, okay? When we look at motherboards, you'll see that on motherboards when we're looking, they'll be color coded differently. The plugs they look exactly the same, but this one will be green and this one will be blue and these are one point one and these are two point one. What did you say? Universal shit. Universal serial bus. Universal serial bus. And there's going to be, just so you know, when I bring up some of these terms today and in chapter one, there's almost always reading related to it later, too. So, and I will tell you, I don't know the difference in speed for 2.0 and 3.0. 2.0 and 3.0. Okay. So I have USB stuff. Basically, if they're keyboard and mice, it doesn't matter where I plug it in. But if I start plugging in stuff like printers and cameras and mics and Mimeos, I may want to think about how I'm plugging those in, not just together. Okay, the last thing on, well, I got two more things. I've got my network cable right there that plugs in. So, Ethernet cable, network cable, whatever you want to call it. It's like a phone cable, it's got eight wires on it instead of four. Okay, when we use these, we only use one with clips. If it doesn't have the clip, go get another one. That's one of those things that the blue guy's gonna have to be running back for. Okay, when we're out in the classroom and the clip's broken off of this, not going to use it. There's a caveat to that. If it's the one that goes up through the ceiling and runs through the ceiling and disappears somewhere, and that's the one missing the clip, we're not going to go get the ceiling. Okay? What we're going to do is we're going to cut it off and we're going to do the end of the football. But if it's one of these ones that's just running between the switch and the computer, I've got I've got tons and tons of Ethernet cables and. I mean, when I say tons and tons, I mean, I've got bins and bins. We're actually going through them all. There's bins of long, medium, and short Ethernet cables um, that we're going to use. And we really want to not have ones with the clip missing, because if I use one with the clip, and I make sure the clip goes snippy snap, but it goes in and it can't pull out, then there's far less chance of us having to go back to that room. If I use one without the clip, it's going to come out. Do you think the middle school and elementary school students never touch it? We just sit there untouched. We're wrong. Okay? So we really want to make sure that they all have clips. And sometimes the clip doesn't clip. Like you'll do this, you give a little time, it'll come straight back out. All we have to do, if the clip's there, we just take the clip and gently bring it out a little bit, not too far, because the last thing you want to snap it off yourself. And then all of a sudden it does snap. Okay? So we've got the Ethernet that plugs in there. Sometimes there's two Ethernet plugs, and usually when there's two, you always want to go to this one because why did we add one? Maybe that one actually doesn't work. That, that's very few and far too. And the last thing that we hook up is the sound right there. And the sound goes in the green plug, okay? So we have teachers that plug in their own stuff and they do a great job on everything except for this. If I look back here, I only have two plugs on this one. I have one green one, it's my speakers. And then I have one that's pink and blue. It's got a little hash to it. Pink is the mic. So you hook up the microphone, sound in. And blue is a sound out plug that you hook up to your stereo, to your surround sound system. That's what the blue is for. And so what's the difference? What would plugging it into that do instead of Well, if you plug it into that, it's not gonna it doesn't put up enough power for speakers and for headphones. So it you might hear it through the blue, but it's going to be a lot quieter. It might on this one if it's smart enough. Green's input audio, blue's output audio, pink is my 
Green is speakers, blue is output audio, and pink is mic. These are basically almost no power. So when our kids are watching a movie or something and they're like, it's up as loud as it can, it's not very loud. They might have it in the blue. Okay, they might. The other thing is some of those Dell speakers, are, they were meant to go right here for me to hear, not for me to blast over in the classroom. And I have new speakers that are powered that I got from the Air Force this year here in a classroom that has, that's trying to use those Dells. Mr. Paul's new speakers, you want to go get you a pair? Okay, feel free to, I've got 80 that I got from the Air Force in a box. The last thing I want is them sitting in a box in my car. Okay, so that's the green plug. We're gonna look at a couple other different PCs in the backs. Um, oh, I did miss one plug and that's this one. This is an old, it's called the parallel port. This pink one right here is for old printers. Okay. Um, most printers are USB anymore. That's an old parallel port. We still have printers that use that. We had these old, uh, they, were, they were HP 710 printers when I got here. Okay, the bubble jet printers. When I first got here, Steve Dirk was our treasurer, and the previous technology coordinator put in a purchase order for the fall order of bubble jet. $14,500 to cover the fall. My budget was $19,000. How many projectors do you think we bought before I got here? Nope, well, there's one. It was in this classroom that, that I was in. Okay, that was the only projector. <laughs> um, it's because we were spending all of our money on ink. So I said, cancel the order. We're not doing ink. And I told all the teachers, if you want to do bubble jet ink, the printer can stay in your room as long as you want it, but you have to buy it on your own because we print out more now than we did then, and it costs us $2,000 a year in toner, with big toner cartridges. That toner cartridge puts out 20,000 sheets of paper for $100. The other one was $100 a room for our bubble jet ink cartridge that put out 1,000 sheets. It's not good enough, right? So that's what those plug into. So you might have those. There are some teachers that really wanted to keep that color bubble jet at their desk. The other thing about this picture that's different is the on-off switch. You never say on-off. You all have zero and ones. One is on, zero is off. One is on, zero is off. One is on, zero is off. It's on most time. Gotta be on the test. On. One is on, zero is off. Okay. So this is our old PC that we used to use. I have this as a test question. Okay. This exact picture. And the question says, does the mouse plug into the purple or green plug? And someone always gets it wrong. Now look at this picture. Closely, this picture. Very closely, the picture. There's a picture of the mouse right next to the green, and a picture of the keyboard right next to the purple. I don't know how you get it wrong. Don't get it wrong. It's on the picture. There's a keyboard hook in to the purple or the green PS2 plug. All you have to do is look at it. Oh, there's a keyboard next to the purple. I am not trying to trick you. Just so you know. It was a gimme question. I thought everyone will get this question right. What an easy question. And yet I was wrong. Okay. So, same thing. We got a PS2 keyboard and mouse. Again, very few computers use them. Most of them use the USBs down here. This has a uh, eight audio sound. It's got our three normal ones plus some extra ones for surround sound. Don't ask me which one is the which because um, I don't use that. And then we've got our expansion video card. We also have. Uh, TV cards, all the teachers' computers have TV cards in them so they can connect up to cable and record and or watch uh, cable shows as part of your classroom, particularly your social studies teachers like to be able to do that. If they have a cable one, if the cable's not connected, they won't get a cable. Sounds obvious, but every year somebody goes, my cable's out, and I go, mm -hmm. oh, okay. so, uh, there are an actual card. This is not our new card. Our new card has two connections back here, and it goes to the one closest to the center. So if we go to that one, our new card actually has two. The other one's actually okay, ten up two. But. So that's the back of, of the PC. The last thing is our network that we need to cook, hook up. So we've got our keyboard and our mouse and our monitor, and, and we've got things ready. We've got to hook up our internet. Now, the internet. Wiring in this school district is really poor. Cool, okay, the best room in the building has three connections in the room. Okay, barring Mr. Wolf's room, which we had completely rewired. Okay, 
but the best one has three. And where are they at? They're by the phone. They're behind the TV up there, because you're going to have a computer there, right? And most of the rooms, especially in elementary school, will have plugged right here underneath the whiteboard. Why? Because only teachers would want to use them. And obviously, they will have a cart sitting here wired up to the internet in front of them. They never even considered student computers when they wired the new Okay? So, we have rooms with 24, 28, maybe only four, with multiple computers with only, at best, one port close by somewhere that they can connect to. Actually, middle school is better, like Mr. Harrison's room and that back row, and there is a plug underneath those in the middle school. There is no plug like that in the elementary school. They never thought the elementary school would have computers. Yes. No matter what they assumed the middle school might, the elementary school no. So we have to use what's called a switch to hook it up. This is a switch. Okay. Now, I have only smart switches. Okay. This is a picture of a dumb switch right here. What's the difference? I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you, Mr. Harrison, thank you. Do you see how this plug looks different than those and it's set out differently off to the side? Okay. On a dumb switch, only one plug could go to the wall. And all the other ones had to go to PCs. If you plug this one into the wall and that one to a PC, no internet. Okay. So where you plug them in made a difference. And... And they had little buttons, so if this went to the wall, you had to make sure the button was in. If it went to a PC, you had to make sure the button was out. It was a nightmare, okay? Because all it took was one student hit the button in the classroom, and then they get lost the internet. So we threw all of these away, okay? And all we have is smart ones that don't matter which one goes where. They'll go, hey, you're the internet. You must be at the wall. Hey, you're a PC, okay? And they figured it out within a minute of being connected. Okay, so all these plugs are equal. That being said, when I hook up a row of computers, what I really want, okay, I have plugs on this one that go one through eight. Okay, if I have four computers, <coughs> what I really want to do is put the wall on number eight and the four computers on one, two, three, and four. Why? So that when it's turned around and set down like this, you go in the room and they say the third computer won't connect. You go one, two, three. Is number three lit up? It's easier for you, for me, later on to figure out what's connected to what. Okay? So that's the way we want it. We want the highest number to be to the wall. It doesn't matter. It will still work. But it will just help us out there. It's a troubleshoot. Okay? So that's kind of the reason we want to do that. Now, if I have this, and I have these hooked up to the switch, and I have this going to the wall, what a switch does is it takes any signal that comes in and repeats it out on the other seven, or however many it has, ports. So it comes in through here, and it just says, but here's some, here's some juice, here's some knowledge, here's some packets of information. And then the computer says, is that for me? Nope, and ignores it. Okay? That's what a switch does. Okay? It used to be called hubs. This is a switch. And as it gets to know the computers, the switch is also smarter and eventually says, this is for you, this is for you, this is for you, okay? But there's a downside to a switch. If, it, if what comes in, it repeats out to everyone, and this is true on any device, what if I have this? And another computer, this would do nothing because there's nothing coming in. But if I had this up to the wall, then the signal that came out would go out through these two, come in this way, it's new information. So it goes out this way, it goes back in, it goes out, it goes back in. And I will tell you, this is called a feedback loop. And the internet was fine. The whole network just crashed. Okay? The whole network just crashed. From this. Now, when I say the whole network, it's not really the whole network. The whole network of the building you're in, because I have it sectioned off. So if you crash the high school, it doesn't crash the middle school, and it doesn't crash the elementary school, but it will crash all the Wi Fi and everything over. For that reason, whenever we hook up the Ethernet, we pull it out to see where it goes to. We don't just leave this going down and go, oh, there's an Ethernet here, and I'll plug it in, because here's what happens. There was a PC here that this went to, but I don't, I've changed things around, and this is what happens. People don't follow the cable to make sure it's not, this isn't happening. 
every single year, and I say this every year, and yet it still happens every year, somebody calls us a feedback loop, and the network goes down, and we spend an hour or two trying to find it, and it sucks. Okay? I'll also tell you, it's almost never you guys. It's almost never a part of our students. It's always tech students, because they know more, and they know faster, and they break it. Okay? Because you guys do it the first time, go, hey, he said not to just do this. He said to pull it out and make sure, and you pull it out and make sure, and you did, and yay. Okay? Now, there's some places we aren't going to pull it. We're not going to pull it out of the ceiling. We're not going to, if we go to uh, Paul Thompson's room today, they're all wired to, to here. There's no way it's going to go all the way through those cabinets and go all the way back through the cabinet. We know that it goes to the computer station. You'll see what I'm talking about. It's when we're looking at desks like this, where there's a switch a bunch of computers right here, that these are just behind there anyway, we can easily make sure it's the right, right one going to the right place, okay? The other thing is, you can also see the lights as we plug them in. If I have the switch on, and switches only work if they're given power, by the way, so oft times these get unplugged and then all of a sudden, I have no internet in my room, and I've gone down before, the computers are all there, there's an aquarium next to this, they've unplugged the switch to plug in the aquarium light, and that's why, and swear, swear to you, that was one of them. And it's like, really? Uh, this is unplugged. Well, I wanted to show the kids the fish. Okay, but you have to accept the fact that you just unplugged the internet. And it's like, you just don't have random stuff. Like, anyway, so it's got to be plugged in and lit, okay? If there's no light on the power, then something's wrong. And as we plug these in, you guys can do this, and you're going to be working as a team anyway. So if I followed this down all the, all the way, and I know this is computer one, and that's the only computer hooked up, the light should come on, right? So there's a second way to verify things. Okay, so I have to make sure I've got it plugged in the right place. When we do this, we really want to unplug and pull everything out as much as we can. I'm not saying you have to unwire all the Ethernet. I'm not saying you have to unwire all the power. In some cases, you've got trays where the, all the wires go in. If they're still in where they go, or the teachers put them there neatly, you don't have to rip it all out. But if it's just piled all over the table, then what I usually do is I set it out over here. And I say, I've got four stations, I should have eight power points. I've got four stations, I've got eight keyboards, or four keyboards. You know what I'm saying? And I inventory first so that when I send the blue man off to get stuff, he's only going once. So I unplug and pull everything out. I put my parts together to make sure. Now, if there's a class in session, I've got to think about how I'm doing this so I don't disturb the class. I may, when I say pull them out, I may just be doing this. And I think, OK, I've got four keyboards. And you know, I've got to realize who I'm around. Place my PC and my monitor and space them out equally in the classroom, try to make them look nice. If there's a pile of goo underneath them, junk, dust, it won't happen now because maintenance has cleaned everything. That's why we've got the computers out. But sometimes you go back and some place is terrible. Get a paper towel and wipe it on the floor. Let them sweep it up tomorrow. I'm not saying you have to clean up the floor, but the workspace as much as you can. Wire the externals, keyboards, mouse, network, and monitor all up. Tie up any extra wires so they're as hidden as possible. We have a couple different ways to secure wires. One of them is we get a bunch of these clips like this. You can just go, you can take some, and you just clip them together. I love the clips. They're easy to redo. I can move the wires around easily. That's one way to secure stuff. The other way is with zip ties, which also works. Just realize you're making it more permanent with a zip tie. Okay? I have lots of zip ties. Use the right length. If you're only putting one cable, use a little baby zip tie. If you're using a big water cable, use a big zip tie. I like to zip tie behind stuff the things that won't ever move. In other words, if the extra keyboard, extra mouse, extra monitor are back there, those aren't going to move. The PC is always going to be with that stuff, right? The Ethernet cable, I don't like zip tying up because if I go and try to undo it next year, <coughs> now i got to do all the zip tie, right? So that's why I don't like zip tying up Ethernet cables. Personal opinion, I think it will make it harder for the next group that's to do it than when they pull it out. Um, I also like to do it in the back of the monitor if I can, so it's nice and hidden. Uh, oh, the other thing is, make sure you're not overly restricting them. The mouse should come to the edge of the table. If you zip tie it up so the mouse is right there, and I've had students do that before, and then I, 
Oh, that's nice. So they get this much mass movement before you just zip out. <coughs> okay, if you can't, it doesn't need to go off the table. It shouldn't be moving the mouse off the table, right? So think of the edge of the table. Same thing with the keyboard. The keyboard should have enough space, enough slack to at least get to the edge of the table because just because you like typing with the keyboard back there, like Frankenstein, doesn't mean they do. They might want to like the tools, okay? So give them a little uh, extra space when you do that. Plug in the power, always last, always last, always last, always last. There are parts of this that if I haven't plugged in out of order, it doesn't matter as long as I do the power last, okay? If I forgot my PS2 and I plugged in my power, it's not going to work. If I forgot both my videos and I plug in my power, it will permanently turn off the video until I go into the control panel and turn it back on, okay? Which happens to teachers a lot, so. Plug it in, and then I say test the system, what does that mean? Testing means start up the PC, log in as you, make sure the web and your H drive works. If those things work, if those two things work, go to Google and Google Mr. Harrison Math Class, boom, whatever. You get anything to come up, you're happy. And if you can see your H drive, you're happy, log on. You just test it, okay? Logging on on its own is not a test. Because if you've ever been on that PC before, it will let you back on it. So you didn't really test the network. Teachers frequently, especially in the elementary school, log on as eStudent or ESLab. If they do that, you didn't test anything. You've got to go to the internet to see if it's working. Okay. Anderson's not here today, and he's sick, so I'm stealing his coke over here. That's, that's, I'm going to have to email him and tell him that Mr. Harrison took your soda. Sorry. It wasn't me. Okay. Neat PCs. I know this is an old picture. It's really old, but it gets my point across. These are big, ugly systems, but the only wires I see when I look at that workstation is the mouse wire. The keyboard's actually underneath the monitor. It's a very, very clean setup. I know it's an old one, but it's still clean. Same thing. Very, very clean setup. We used to have those. Those were the giant monsters. Okay. I didn't get it. I go. Oh my gosh, they were huge. We had one, it was like this deep. It took two people to carry that monitor. It was so heavy. It was ridiculous. Why I are they so big? That's what CRTs, I mean, that's what, that's what we had to work with back then. Anyway, so what you guys are going to be doing is you're going to be doing PCs in the middle school. Okay? Not multi point stations. I've kind of separated it out. The Block one is doing, and by the way, you're gaining the student. You are getting math. Yes, Max shocked me. It's coming to second block. So they're going to have four, and you're going to have five. So um, you guys are doing PCs only. They all look like this. And just so you know, we're going to swap them all out in the next two weeks. But if you guys have them all set up and the plugs are there where they should be, the swapping them out will be easy. You're going to be putting a different PC in and plugging it in the back and walking on it. Right? Uh, these are multi-point stations. So you guys are doing the PCs. The first block is doing multi-point in the elementary school, and the tech students are doing the multi-point in the middle school. So if you walk into a room and see any one of these setups, it's multi-point, move on. That's not you. They all, all the ones you guys are doing look like this. And you're going to say, why are we swapping out the same thing? Because they look the same, but they look the same, but they aren't the same. We have 755s in the middle school. Okay? 755 is, has two processors and they're 1.6 gigahertz processors. The 780 has four processors and they're 2.4 gigahertz processors. So this is not twice as fast, it's more like four times faster than the other one. Way faster memory too. You guys are going to learn about memory standards later. 755 has DDR2. It says DDR3, almost twice as fast on the memory as well. So I just got 120 of these from the Air Force Monday and Thursday before last. So we're going to go and upgrade them all. In fact, the drives are already ready. My tech students are going to start doing that today. They may even be ahead of you, or I'm not sure they're going to go ahead of you or behind you on the setups. They might do some rings, but they might let you get some. Anyway, so that's where we're going to go. We're going to start out at Miss Thompson's room because hers was torn out the most. Do we have the time to go down there, yes? 
What time do we have? We have, we have enough time to go down and at least get it started. Now, here's what we're, we're all going to go to Ms. Thompson's room. And I'm going to tell you right now that her room is a mess, not by her own fault, okay? And even if it was in the right place, I'm going to say it's a mess by our fault. Hers was the um, let's make other rooms match monitors and put all the unmatching ones in Ms. Thompson's room, <laughs> okay? So her monitors do not match at all but they will when you guys are done, okay? Also, well that's why we're gonna spend some time there. Also, she has really crummy keyboards. We're gonna take a whole box of brand new HP keyboards down and just throw away all of her keyboards. She has all PS2 keyboards. Those don't take PS2, by the way. They only take USB. There's the 755s had, um, had PS2 in the bottom. You can see there is no PS2 on here. It's a USB only keyboard. Now I can, the 75 has an adapter down here for the PS2. We could pull them all out, but we already showed you we have 270 new keyboards. Why would I do all that work to put in an old crummy keyboard instead of just putting it in there? It just makes more sense. So we're going to go ahead and go down there right now. Does anybody have any questions before we're, we're done with this? You know what? I'm going to talk about. One more thing on the multi-point systems before we go, just so you guys understand the multi-point. The multi-point is one PC, because I explained it to them, so I explained it. There's one PC running multiple workstations, okay? Some of the PCs are hooked up directly. When I say directly, I mean the video from here goes straight to this video to this video, okay? The ones that are hooked up directly also, no, nothing else is hooked up to the back of this. This is ready to go right now, except for USB. USB is the only thing that, that works on this. So I hook up my monitor, and then for each workstation, there's a separate USB. And it associates this USB hub with that monitor. So the keyboard and the mouse or a monitor both have to be plugged into the same USB, and it's plugged into the PC. Same thing keyboard and monitor for one of the ones that's plugged in directly, hooked up. And this is, by the way, <coughs> sound for this one. So this USB controls the keyboard, the mouse, and the audio all through this one USB device. And then, and then you can only do two, except for Studebakers, so can do four, because he has a big, huge monitor tire. You can only do two, because they only take one video card, so that's two. Anything else goes through one USB to one of these two kind of devices that get mounted on the back of the monitor, okay? These screw, they're always supposed to be screwed on the back of the monitor, never let left on the ground, which we've already found a couple times. You get screwed on the back with the connectors up so that you could plug in your headphones. And then on here, you've got your mouse, keyboard, monitor, and port plugs for to plug in sound, and all of it goes to one USB cable. So we need a new, like, a back to there. That's why you want to have this plugged in so when these two are together, so that if I plug this in, it's on its own USB channel. And I plug another one in, it's on its own USB channel. Because this mouse and keyboard is thinking nothing. But this, pushing all that through it, uh, it doesn't have enough power to do it, to do two of them in one USB. So, and just so you know, these are the ones we used in the middle school. We got them for free for eating. Uh, they were thrown away. And these are the ones in the elementary school because we didn't have enough of these at the time, so we had to buy something and this was cheaper. So um, actually works better too. But so those get mounted on the back. Now all monitors don't have the back that you can mount to. And so if I need to mount this on the back, it doesn't have the back that you can mount to. The lazy man's answer is this is not the correct answer. The correct answer is have a billion extra monitors, I go get one that you can mount to. Okay? Which is why we found these laying on the ground on the floor in middle school. Because whoever set them up, whatever team put them up, took the lazy way out. So I just want you to know, but you guys are not setting those up right now. I needed to break you guys up because there's enough PCs to keep you guys busy for a week and a half or so. Okay, I'm gonna stop recording. You go